Hi guys! In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make tattered cloth, tears, rips and holes for your marvelous designer beggar clothes, zombie clothes or any other tattered kind of clothes you need to make. So I'll start by creating the loose hanging zombie dress and then we'll texture it in Photoshop. So I'll take my rectangular pattern tool, draw out a big square, something like that. And I don't want it to be symmetric, I want it to be lopsided, loose, ragged looking, so I'm not bothering with any symmetry. I'm going to press this button here to hide the texture so I can see her silhouette through it. Then I'll take my split line tool, and I'm going to add a point somewhere here, and then one somewhere over there. And then I'm going to right click and say show line lengths. And then I'm going to add a point here at 260, so I'll take my split line tool and right click and then type in the number and the same thing here. Now I'm going to add another point right next to it on both sides. Then I'll take my edit pattern tool, select this point and this point, holding down shift I'm going to drag this down a bit, then take this line here, hold down shift, drag that out and do the same thing here. Then I'll take this line and bring it in a bit, this one too, and make these sleeves a bit wider at the openings by taking these points down. And make this also a bit wider in the bottom. I'm also going to take this point down a bit more to make it lopsided. And I'm going to make this sleeve shorter because I'm going to make the bottom look torn. And if it's shorter then it looks more torn than the other one. Then I'll take my curve tool and curve the opening here for the neck. Then I'll select my pattern, copy, and I'm going to mirror paste it. Then I'll take my segment sew tool and sew these together. Take my edit sewing tool, drag this up and drag this to here and drag this seam to here and this one across to there. Drag this to the back, right click, flip horizontally, and then press the spacebar to simulate. Then I'm going to go into here, into the physical property, and assign the R cotton cloth preset. Open that up, take down the shear and the bending weft and warp. Something like that to make it hang softer. Now let's see it with her arms down more. And that looks about right. I'd like it to be even a bit more asymmetric, so I'm going to take my edit pattern tool, select this point, holding down shift, select this one, and then still holding down shift, drag it up a bit. And that's better. I think the armholes need to go up a tiny bit, so I'm going to select this point, and this one, and this one, and this one, holding down shift, take them up a touch, something like that. I want it to be very loose and ragged looking. And I think it's a bit too loose here, so I'm going to take this point, holding down shift, then right click and type in 40, and then hold down shift, right click and type in 40 here too. And that's better. Now it's important to get the design right before we start texturing it, otherwise it will make us more work afterwards to change the texture to fit the new design. So once you're happy with it, you can pause simulation. And then I'm going to go to display and turn off show 2D grid. And then I'll take this dress up here where her shadow is not in the way. I'm going to zoom in. In fact, I'll click here on 2D so that the other window isn't taking up space on my screen. I take my rectangular pattern tool and I'm going to draw it something like a bounding box around this pattern. Transform it down a bit. Something like that. So it fits within this box. And then I can see what size I need to make my Photoshop document. So I'm going to go into Photoshop, File, New. And in millimeters, make sure it's in millimeters, not in pixels, because MD is in millimeters, and if you're looking at the numbers from MD, then you want that to match. So that was 1043, I think. 
by 1133. I'll say OK. Then I'll go back to Marvelous, delete this rectangular, right click and hide my line lengths, zoom up as close as I can, and then take my Snagit tool. You can also use your snipping tool that comes with Windows and make a screenshot of it. And then I'll save it. And then back in Photoshop, I'm going to go File, Place, and bring in that snag that I just saved. And then holding down Shift, I'm going to scale it up. And then press Enter. And now what I'm going to do is make a new layer, take my paint bucket and fill it with black or any color, it doesn't matter. Hide that for the meantime and give that a layer mask. Then I'll take my magic wand tool on this layer and select my dress or shirt or whatever it is that you want to texture. Then I'm going to show my black layer. Do Control shift i to select the inverse, which would select everything around the dress. Then go on my mask, take my paint bucket again, X to swap colors, and fill that with black. So basically, on masks, anything that is white is visible, and everything that is black gets hidden. Control D to deselect it. So you can see if we show this layer here, and where to move it, you can see we see through it. So we can hide that now, we don't need that, or we could even throw it out, it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to go File Open, and I'm going to load in a burlap texture, and go Edit, Define Pattern, OK. And then I'll double click on this layer, Pattern Overlay, and select one of my burlaps. Then we can also do a color overlay and I'll set that to multiply and reduce the opacity a bit. Now you don't necessarily have to apply a texture, a fabric weave or anything onto this. You could just make it as an opacity map and then load that into your render engine as an opacity map and then afterwards apply another texture on top of it, of flowers or of anything that you want. I'm just going to apply this burlap because I think it looks nice and play with the scale a bit. Alright, something like that. I'll say OK. And now, to make all the ripped edges and holes, we need to use a texture of some sort. So, here you can see I have a folder full of all kinds of PNGs, of tears, of holes, and of ripped edges. And these I got on Renderosity. I have a great pack of these torn fabrics. And it's really cheap, twelve and a half dollars. And they're really, really useful. So now let's see how we use these PNGs to create holes in our texture. So I'm going to leave this here on the side of my screen. And then the first thing I want to do is rip up the edge a bit. So to make the tone edge, I'm simply going to drag an image and drop it here, press enter, and it becomes a smart object. So when we scale it, we're not going to lose detail, which is good. And then holding down shift, I'm going to scale it up and rotate it, something like that. And then I'll press enter. And now I'll control click on this layer, hide it, click on my mask of my dress and take my brush at 100% opacity on white. And as you can see, as I paint here, we're painting in those torn edges. Now there are all kinds of nice holes here and rubbed off worn out areas which I'd like to capture as well. Then I'll do Control shift i to select the inverse, switch my colors, so my foreground colors black, and then for opacity set to around 30 and a big brush, I'm just going to brush over parts here. And in this part, I'm going to take a smaller brush and brush a few times because there's a nice hole here I'd like to capture. And 
And then if I do Control D, we can see that we have here a torn edge and here we have a hole. Now I'm going to switch my colors again. That's the X to switch colors. And then paint with white this part that went a bit too far. And we can also gently paint back at a lower opacity. Some things around here, the edges, where it's taken a bit too much. The edge here is still too straight, so I'm going to show this again. Control click on it. And then using my white brush, I'm going to paint over here. And one more time here in the edge. And there we've got a nice torn edge. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more tutorials and like and share with your friends to show your support.